We're looking yeah. at a place in western Montana called Camas Prairie. And you see some hills in the foreground and you see a basin in the background, right? Okay, right here on top of this hill and down on the side here, you see that there are some quarrying operations. Those are quarrying gravel because everything you're looking at here, this whole landscape between the hills are these large masses of gravel, trillions of tons of gravel. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sweeping around as the video plays, and you're gonna notice down here a series of ripples. If you look up, you're gonna see a flat piece of land like a tongue coming out, rounded, yeah, that's a delta. That's a delta, you know what a delta is? You ever heard of a, a delta? It's when a river comes into a body of water and it's carrying sediment. And because the river is moving along swiftly, it's carrying the sediment, but when it comes into the standing body of water, it slows down and it drops its sediment, it builds a delta. The whole city of Portland, for example, is built on a giant delta, ah. right? New Orleans is built on a delta, right? Okay, so what we're seeing there is a delta. And then in front of it, we're seeing rippled landscape. So rippled can, landscape that looks exactly like the beach looks. Yeah, yeah. keep coming around with That's that. That's the Let's, thing, it's fractal, because this, this yeah. is the, the whole mystery of this, that this happens at a scale of inches on beaches and a scale of hundreds of feet here. Stop again. Good okay. Lord. <laughs> now, right here in the middle, you see a massive delta. Yes. Spewed out like a big tongue, splayed out. And then right down here, you start seeing the ripples. And there's a farmhouse. You see the farmhouse there? Mm. Now, those ripples are, the tallest ones are about the height of a five-story building. Whoa. Right. These things, they're the size of a five-story building. What is that, like 70 feet or something like that? Feet. 50, 50 feet. 50 okay. feet? Okay. So that's, those are 50 feet high. And how much water? Two to th we'll, we'll get to that. Let's see, let's see the rest of it. And these are just dirt, right? They're, they're, well, if you dig into one, what you're going to find is they're a, they're a massive. Okay. Let's pause again. Whoa. Look at this. This is crazy. This is totally crazy. This is one of the craziest things you'll ever see. This is right this, here. these ripples, the repeated ripples in an area where there's nothing else like it. This is the fingerprints of the flood. That's yeah. what it is. Wow. This is um, this is mind blowing shit. And I think I think you made the crucial point, Joe, which is which is that we can understand what this is because we can see it on any beach. We can yeah. see how water flows receding across a sandy medium will produce ripples. But here, they're on this unbelievable scale where they're hundreds of feet long and 50 feet high, where they dwarf houses, and they're lying all across. And that, what that tells us is that a huge water flow went across this plain and did this. You, well, seeing what? it from this perspective above, yeah. which is a rare perspective unless you're in a plane or a helicopter or something, you get a chance to look at it this way, you really get a better sense of what it is. If you were on the ground there, you'd probably say, oh, look at all the hills. It's hard to yeah, see. You don't yeah. quite get the impression. Now, we did visit mm. this, this location, um, and, and, and to that day it was overcast, so you don't quite get the effect like you do when you've got when a low sun angle. Mm -hmm. really helps you to see what, what, what's going on in the landscape. Can I ask you, is there a dispute to this? Is uh, there a, um, No, no, nobody disputes it. No, nobody, so nobody disputes, disputes that, this no, from a flood? Not anymore. Wow. No. In fact, it was this JT party. Let, let's that we, be clear. Yeah. Nobody disputes that it was caused by massive water flows. Exactly. Okay. But the those details. same people would still not buy into the notion that there was this one humongous flood. Okay. So they, they think it's an accumulative effect, but that this was all created This by was the water. bottom of Lake Missoula, right? Yes. And this is supposed to actually represent the draining of Lake Missoula. Right. Whereas I argue from a number of different reasons that this is the filling. The water here, Joe, that did this, the way to visualize this is to, again, begin to think a tsunami. You have to think tsunami, because it's right. the, tsunami is the closest scale of water flow that we've experienced in, in modern times. No river flood ha has even approached this. Right. You know, no, no flood in any floodplain. Nothing that we can put into perspective. Right. The closest, the closest we can get to it is a, is a tsunami. But even there, you've got to picture the tsunamis that we've experienced in the last decade and a half in, you know, in, in Indonesia and Japan. When they made landfall, those tsunamis were roughly between 20 and 50 feet, depending on where you were relative to the, to the oncoming wave and how far distant you were from it. Here what you have to visualize is a tsunami sweeping over the land that's over 1,000 feet deep. That's, that's what happened here. And we know that because we can trace the, the, the high water marks on the hillsides are a clearly thousand. left. The high water marks are clearly etched into the, into the hillsides. So we now know 
based upon the study of the ripples. And the water here was moving down. It's filling this basin. It's rushing in in a great tsunami from the north of fresh water, melt water, coming off the ice sheet. And it's sweeping down over this land at probably two or 300 million cubic feet per second, which is an inconceivable amount of water. It's, it's many times in excess of every river flowing on Earth, flowing today all at once. It's, it's beyond that many times, 10 or 20 times beyond that. One of the trippier things about water is that water in, a, in itself is kind of fractal in some sort of a weird way. When you look at the, the, the actual molecules yeah. of water, it's almost like we don't, we don't distinguish it as being a fractal thing because we mm. see it as like this moving flow. But if you're, you're looking at the actual molecules of water, a cup of water with you, that you dip your fingers in, which is seemingly completely innocuous, mm. becomes this massive element of change when the volume is a thousand feet high and mm -hmm. just rolling mm -hmm. over with massive amounts of weight behind yep. it. It's that same stuff. Massive amounts of weight. Enough, it, enough very weight bizarre. That, it's, that it's actually causing seismic responses. I can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, how much is. weight are you talking about that can create these 50 foot high walls? But this, what's fascinating to me is that we don't have we, we don't have a scale, like in our minds, as a reference, like the difference between that little cup and these gigantic waves that uh, you, you see that uh, surfers uh, travel by jet ski to get to, you know, the, off of, uh, I believe it's Mexico. Right. You ever seen those massive waves? They go way out, miles yeah. out, to get to these crazy waves, and we ride them in, they're like 60, 70 feet high. Mm. Like, that's, that's the comparison, almost, like a glass of water to those waves, mm. and then that to this. It scales up, it scales yeah. up, it scales up, and at a certain point, it can change the whole story of civilization. It doesn't, almost doesn't compute. Like, it's, 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 you can it's, intellectualize it, but it's almost not computing. Computing. One of these flood flows here is three orders of magnitude greater than the largest measured modern flood. In other words, over a thousand times greater. Wow. In terms of peak discharge or volume, you would have to scale up at least a thousand times greater than any modern measured flood to get to the smallest, really, of these flows here. Because this is, this is just one, re, one place, one locale, of on five states where you can trace the the literally the the uh, an ocean of fresh water sweeping across the entire Pacific Northwest pretty much washing away anything that was there it's almost like we have a defense <clears throat> mechanism built in mm -hmm. where we ignore how vulnerable we really are like we put it maybe that's one of the reasons why people are so reluctant to really go deep into studying asteroidal impacts I think or, it is, yeah. or even to pay attention to this stuff mm -hmm. like that this could happen mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, the, 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 those are not yeah. two separate subjects because this is the result of the comet impact on the on the ice cap. This is, this is the this is why I okay. feel that the research Stop. in this field is so vital. Okay, right there. Yeah. Now here, notice. This is crazy. That's a beach. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. but, but it's a it's a beach it's a beach for giant monsters. Is yeah. what it is. You can see in this here that you've actually got three massive currents converging here. Do you see that? Over yeah. here on the right, you've got a massive current coming in that would be uh, from the west. And then we're standing, we would be standing looking down current. Of course, this, the, um, the drone I'm guessing here is about 200 feet in elevation. So the top of the water was another eight to 900 feet above this perspective right here. Mm -hmm. And it's moving very, very fast. And it's sweeping down into a river valley that's down in those mountains you see in the distance. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's being carried down and joining up other equally as large floods coming in from other valleys. And all of this is happening at once, and it's covering five states, basically. And that's just one region that's being affected by this sudden catastrophic melting of the ice sheets. We that, are dealing with the largest flood that ever occurred on Earth. It's as simple as yeah. that. This is insane. I mean, it's insane to look at. And Isn't it happened here in North America, and it happened 12,800 years ago, and its story has yet to be fully told. Isn't it possible that there was something larger before, like uh, the 65 million year ago one that hit the Yucatan? Like, what? 
you know, what kind of an impact did that have? Well, it actually would, because if it, if Different that kind had of happened right? 12,000 years ago, we wouldn't be having None of us would be here. Today. Yeah, that would be a wrap, right? Yeah, that was right. a that, single large that object about six miles wide. That was, yeah. that was a, a much more devastating impact than the impacts of 12,800 years ago. But nevertheless, those impacts of 12,800 years ago were really, really bad, and they yeah. did stuff like this. And anything that was in the way of this, of these massive flows of water, would have been rubbed completely from the story. See, and this here, all he, makes sense. Yeah, and here, here's the thing that the Michael Shermers don't get. When you understand the extent of this, the scale of this phenomena, and the severity, the, the un inconceivable severity of this, in the aftermath of an event like this, what would remain of a, of a city, a village? A refrigerator. A, 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 no, yeah. not a goddamn thing. Not nothing. Nothing. Nothing, not much. Would, nothing would exist in the not, aftermath of this. And most things wouldn't exist. I mean, you find like an old refrigerator or a car up on blocks in someone's mm. backyard in the south. And it's you know, the 1970s, and the, the the rot has gotten into yeah. the frame. The, 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 nature's going to eat it up. Yeah, nature's eating it up just in a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be like in a couple thousand years? It's going to be non-existent. We should not be surprised about how little we really know about our past. This is also a comfort game with archaeology. Oh, yeah, we've got the past all worked out. We understand it. Right. Here it is. This is what we teach in schools. This is what our friends in the media report. This is the fact. It's not the facts. We know nothing. It's There's, there's been so much lost, so many missing pieces of the past puzzle that we're you know desperately trying to stitch together and it's important i think that we actually do get some clarity on events like this because we still live on this planet and we have kids and we have a future and we want to hopefully we want to hopefully we want Not to if one of those big boys comes our way well that's that's right but again i come i come down to this which yeah. is which is that we are not dealing with gloom and doom and the end of the world we're dealing with a problem that humanity should be confronting we should not be sticking our heads in the sand we should be confronting this problem and that's why I support the work of the Comet Research Group, because they are the only people right now who are confronting this problem and really getting to grips with it.